what year was this? 1995. They have questioned people that live there, asked them, how do you like it here? What, you know, like, we, I mean, we get together later and talk. They've separated us. We had nothing to hide. They, we, they walked in. They walked through our homes, everything. And at the end of the day, they were leaving with T-shirts, and asking pops, could they hunt? Could they come back up there and hunt? These are the same white officials from Putnam County. They want to go fishing and, and come hunt the deers. And we were like, well, we don't kill animals. That's not something we're about. We're, you know, we're against that type of thing. But how did it go from that? I mean, to me, that was a starting point of them saying, wow, we've got to do something to stop these people. Because we couldn't find anything. They couldn't find anything there that was wrong with the way that we lived. It was completely legal. We weren't bothering anybody. We were clean. They walked right through. I mean, it's just like, they even took, they went as far as taking Pops to the headquarters in Atlanta to do uh, a lie detector test. On two occasions, they made him come in one day, then they made him come back to do a lie detector test. He passed both te uh, lie detector tests. And it was questions concerning our lifestyle that they were asking him. And he had nothing to hide. He answered all of their questions. He passed the lie detector test. They left us alone after that. But then they kept fishing for something, you know. And it, it had to get to the point of, excuse me, one small group of people being disgruntled for one reason or another. And that just led to the fall of an entire nation. I mean, or not saying that it is, but to lead to that, I mean, it's just like, and to remove a person who's done nothing but good, you know, we're not going out saying, let's, you know, get involved with politics and all this type of thing. I mean, we were just living for of and by each other, just simple, just let's all be rich together. You know, we can't make it on our own, let's all be rich together. We'll have one nice big place for all of us. We'll teach our children how to be intelligent for all of us. That was it. No plots against the government. We paid our taxes. Our land taxes were paid. What? You know, what did we do that was so offensive to anybody? But the information that Pops put out there was offensive to someone. And that's the reality. And that offense went beyond where it should have gone. And there were people used in doing that that had no idea that it was something way bigger than them. The conspiracy is way deeper than it appears to be, like Chopper was saying. It's beyond all of us, you know, and we've got to bring him home. That's the reality. Thank you, Sister Hager. Hey, Robert. Robert. Um, my cousin, my sisters, and family up here already said everything. There's not too much for me to say other than, of course, I was hurt. And the message is basically, it's never too late, you know, to set it straight, set the record straight. If my father can forgive y'all, I forgive y'all. You know what I'm saying? So, just come on and give it a try. Um, I want to say, like, you know, Zabe said, years ago, we did. I enjoyed the life that we had in Bushwick. As a matter of fact, when my mother got up and my sisters cried, we all cried. And actually, I came back when I was 13. And it was interesting because I used to sit there and tell them the kind of life that they have out there that they shouldn't want to go to because I was subjected to all of that, you know. Um, when I came there, I was a total different person from what they knew me as when I left when I was nine years old. My mentality was different. Um, you talk about a person, ghetto from the street. That was me, you know. It just everything about me was wrong. My attitude, the way I spoke to grown-ups and adults, my elders, I had no respect, nothing, you know. And I have to say thanks to my father, he definitely, definitely changed me into who I am today. As far as an education, I didn't care about that then, and now I have plenty thanks to him, you know. And w what most people don't realize is that this has a long-term effect on our generations, you know. My daughter, when she last seen him, she was four years old. And still today, she asked about him. So, I mean, people need to come, take him into consideration that, you know, they hurt a lot of people. Not just our blood relatives, but a lot of other people who also saw him as a father. I 
think we all summed it up, really, you know. I got a lot to say, but I know I'm going to get mad, you know, if I say it. But the reality is, man, doors will always open. They always are, you know. And uh, I just want to leave them with this thought. If y'all say this about Dr. Malachi of York, what does it say about your parents? You know, they came in, they sacrificed, they developed it. You know what I'm saying? They worked hard, they sacrificed. Just got the crap, come home. It's that simple. All right, I think that's a good closing note for this evening. Um, we want to thank all of our panelists for the second segment for joining us. You give them some applause as well. Um, were there any other closing closing thoughts, Brother Bernard and Sister Fair, that you wanted to share before we close out? Yes, I wanted to say that um, in the time that I've been here in the community, I've had the opportunity to do so many different things with my life that I probably would never have had the opportunity to do. Because like most black male Americans growing up in this society. My yearbooks are filled with the dead and the incarcerated also. And uh, these are people who I hung out with and socialized with on a regular basis. Um, I also had the opportunity to be in the boys house and to raise some of the children who are part of this conspiracy against our beloved master teacher Malachi as New York. And uh, as a brother growing up in the community, I came here when I was young, and, he, and eventually, as a brother, all the adults were taught that all these children belong to us. None of these children are anyone's individually in heart. They're all our children, and we were taught to love all of them as if they all came through us, because they do. They come through us, not from us. Brothers, as well as sisters, spent their entire life um, efforts in protecting our children, raising our children. We stood guard 24 hours a day right. under the impression that if anything came out, we could. Um, anything that we did was for the efforts of raising our children because we knew that we were all messed up. We knew that we were adults who were already tainted by the devil, who were already so infused with devilishment that there wasn't a whole lot of hope for us. And we voluntarily entered into a system of communal living for the benefit of our children. No one was coerced. No one was coerced. No one was forced. As a matter of fact, in hindsight, all the decisions that were made that turned out to be to our detriment were decisions we made as the adults. We made the decision to send our children to public school, which is where most of them got their information and knowledge about the devilishment that goes on in our societies. We made that decision. Dr. Malachi of York did not. Um, we went out, we made the money, we decided we were gonna turn it in and live communally. We bought Tamaray with our own money. We didn't take nobody's loan. We built it with our own sweat and our own blood. And it was ours. And uh, this was all because of the efforts of Dr. Malachi of York to take us as a people, adults and children, do everything in his power to make us a better people and it worked because we came out a better people just look at some of the beautiful panelists here you see here today and how they can speak articulately about and passionately about the things that went on in their lifestyle so in closing I would just like to say that it's about freeing Dr. Malachi as York if for no other reason he's ours he doesn't deserve to be in a place not amongst us